a picture of uh, a picture of you smiling, and I was like, that is me smiling. <laughs> Nothing like some cold water to get the day started when you're absolutely just parched. But what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the second episode of Building in Public. Today we have a huge internal hackathon with the team. Really excited to get the team together and actually get something done. It's so cool to be able to brainstorm and be able to work on something that's, that's meaningful. So stick along for the ride. But all right, it's around 9.30. I think it's about time to go to meet everybody for our little all day. Hackathon. Yeah. Just secured some time when he's at Custer Buns. Let's get it. What's up? Oh, wow. Yeah. Today is the day. Today is quite literally the day th that we've been waiting for. No worries. Now it's reserved. Uh, we're in, yeah, we're in this one. Right? In this one? We have to switch at lunch time. Let's do it. Our goal for today's session, first, flesh out the entirety of our experience. Number two, nail down this business model and the course of the last one, be able to actually do some of the logistical components of our experience. Yeah, that sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just that login page, welcome page, and that's pretty much it for these high fidelity stuff. But for, for like, uh, other pages we have to figure out. We'll tell you probably by the end of our today or maybe this week. Like, yeah. Um, what are some low fidelity sketchups of the app that we, we could uh, start? Any other questions, modifications? Because once we are all aligned on this survey formatting and question list, like I would say, like let's start developing that wait list. Let's, let's start stacking those numbers so that. We planned this hackathon date way back in early May when we first started. So getting to this point has been like a mini marathon in and of itself. We spent a lot of time preparing materials for this morning. Our team consists of me, Brian, Noah, and our summer intern, Victoria. We each come from different backgrounds, but all complementary. Myself from a branding and marketing background, Brian from a tech background, Noah from an applied psychology background, and Victoria with a design background. So we spent the entirety of the morning focused on team updates, reviewing initial logo and icon designs, reviewing other materials like our ICPs, our waitlist survey, and then focusing on experience design. And the best part about all of this is that the hope is there's no superficial swiping. Every feature is designed with a key hypothesis in mind about our customer, about validating and solving their pain points, and essentially are the amalgamation of information we heard in customer interviews and industry research. So the hope is, is that we can tackle key moments in the friendship life cycle and find unique ways to enable that in real life human connection, which ultimately is the goal of a platform like this. But I think it'd be good. Okay, we finish this, like, let's just start sending it out to our friends and just being like, can you fill this out if you're interested? We'd love to have you along. And at least all the people that I've asked, but like, this sounds awesome. I, I personally experienced this. I would love to try it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh? Pho, Indonesian seafood. All right, we just wrapped up the first few hours of our session. What do you guys think? about the first few hours. I think we're making good progress, thinking through uh, what types of surveys we want to do for the onboarding and thinking about how we can start planning our first event. So now we've moved on to thinking about lunch. Yeah, looking at the food, that's all I'm thinking about right now, but uh, made some good progress. Finally good to um, get a better idea of what the experience looks like, uh, stuff like that, so yeah. Nice. This one, right? Yeah, that's the place. You like find us in maybe like Japan. Alright, what's up YouTube? 
about to get a camera, so testing this out, seeing how, how it's like. Oh, let me flip the screen, actually. I have that now. I don't know how to adjust the, um, the exposure. Though, so. Yeah, I'm recording right now. Nice. Bring that ISO up. All right, how do I do that? Uh, ice, uh, the, the ring at the back. That's the, right here? 200. Where's the number? Okay, there it is. Dual native ISO. Oh, so that's one of the... Yeah, this is this camera is like dual native. Mm -hmm. So what do you hold when you're vlogging? Like, do you just hold this? Okay, I just hold the ring. What's going on, everyone? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's give me... What's going on, everybody? I'm here with Noah and Freddy. What's up, Freddy? Uh, Freddy's YouTube channel. Oh, I forgot. I keep staring at the screen. Now I gotta look at the lens. Yeah. That's another thing you gotta learn. Um, actually, it's the same thing. This time, I'll probably just be more distracted looking at that screen all the time. But no, it's nice. So, we're out here. What's this place called? AO Hawaiian Hideout. AO Hawaiian Hideout in South Loop. And uh, nothing yet, but we're about to. <laughs> get the order in. Get the order in. Excited to excited to chow. I don't know. What are you guys' thoughts on uh, you know, one month kind of working on this, and what are you excited about the most? I think I'm excited about helping people build community and find connections outside of who they normally interact with, and you know, things like Bumble BFF people try out and don't really have great results with. So I'm really excited to bring a more curated experience and something that really helps people form lasting connections. Love that. What about you, Brian? What are you most excited about? Dude, honestly, so I'm, a, I'm, I'm the technical guy, right? I'm just really excited to build something that people would actually use and actually find value in. Um, that's, that's the part I'm really most excited about. Problem itself is like a really, really personal problem. So I'm passionate about that too. So. Amazing. And I think for me, what I'm most excited about is I know exactly what it's like to go to a new city for some opportunity, whether that's a job or to go back to school or something like that. So I personally moved to Chicago for a job. And when I came here, I didn't know anybody. And I spent my first year just in my uh, basement apartment room. And during the winter here, it's pretty cold. And I didn't really have a lot of opportunity to connect with others and build friendships and meaningful relationships with others or definitely not find that community. So, you know, fast forward two years later, I know how much that stuff means to me and giving the opportunity to provide that to somebody else um, would be super fulfilling and meaningful. So excited to see how this project runs until then. It was just a little like, you know, something's happening here. There's a thing that's happening. Brian, like, my senior year roommate. All right, you gotta rate the restaurant. Oh, I would rate it a uh, eight out of 10. I really enjoyed the Penang poutine. I feel like it was a very creative dish and I would love to come back and try the standard Penang curry and uh, the vegan uh, Mapo tofu would be another dish I'd love to check out. So yeah, what about you guys? Rating. Um, I'd say portion size was good. Taste was okay. Um, my quality was okay, so I'd say 6.5 out of 10. Thank you so much. I got like the most simplest dish, just the spam and rice. Uh, simple, honestly, spam was pretty good. Uh, rice was pretty normal, I'll give it a 6.5 out of 10. Might return next time. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Maybe for me too, yeah. I feel like this would be a fun spot. Okay, so we got this experience thing down. I think when we talk about the 2.0 product, I'm still undecided in my head about whether or not that should be free with the app or if that comes in an elevated tier service. But I think for the experience, yeah, we have it as a subscription or a one off payment. But then you have to find a way to make this subscription thing unique. You can't just do what they call it, it's got to be something else. But having recurring revenue is just for a business. It's great. Yeah, I think. Uh, a pricing model similar to Divi's is something that's interesting to me. Mm. You get just an absurd amount off of e-bike whenever you have a subscription, uh, but you can still participate without the subscription. So I think it could be something like if you want a ticket to our event, it's like 45 or even $50. Maybe that's too high, maybe it's $40. Um, but then if you're a subscribing member, you can get a ticket for $10 or $20. We spent the entirety afternoon 
around three hours focused on continuing to update our experience design, spending a bulk of the time on our business model, and then ending with the summer roadmap. So with the experience design continuing to flesh out from the moment a user onboards to a moment someone attends an experience, to a moment someone gets connected, what that process might look like. And then on the business model side, really trying to understand how is the business going to make a sustainable amount of money that allows the business to flourish, that allows us to grow, that allows us to expand while giving customers the value that they deserve out of something like this. So we're still trying to figure out what that proposition exactly looks like, whether or not we want to approach it with a subscription model, a freemium model, uh, a one-time payment and a subscription model. And I think it's as a result varying. And so we actually did some financial projections, you know, with numbers that we definitely pulled out of our ass, but best case scenario, this could be going somewhere. And then of course, worst case scenario, it ends with an absolute dud. But I think with business model, right, it's always challenging because it's how do you give the customer the value that they need, but also that allows the business to continue to you know, grow, expand, and have some semblance of profitability. And I feel like that's the very fun challenge that we have on our hands. But the team and I really believe that if done correctly, we're going to be able to do something that a lot of these other meetup apps cannot. And that's guaranteed FaceTime with another person slash people. And I know that we're talking in this context more about friendships, but even with relationships in mind, friendships in mind, the goal is guaranteed FaceTime. The opportunity is to share the type of person that you are to be able to connect on shared interests and then of course be able to develop a relationship over time so hopefully in the upcoming weeks we're able to un better understand our business model from our beta tests see if people are actually willing to pay and then finally we wrapped up the day with our summer roadmap putting down when we want to actually start begin to go on market trial run our experience and of course, when we might have an actual app on market. So super exciting stuff, but definitely enough to keep us busy for the rest of the summer and the rest of 2024. All right, it is around 4.15 p.m. and we have just come up on continual logistical problems, I think with our experience, things that we hadn't exactly thought of before that make an impact on whether or not this can be as low touch as possible eventually, you know, because we would hope that this service is as automated as possible so that it's the most structured to make sure that uh, things flow seamlessly and that it's not giving us manual hassles, but some things might always require a little bit of a manual touch. So brainstorming, not, not exactly the, the easiest, but I'm glad that we started talking about these and start fleshing this out now, because even though we just did that, we just scheduled our first ever beta test for July. So progress is being made. You know, we're getting closer to where we need to be. And that I think is just so exciting. The fact that it's actually going on market next month and yeah, we'll continue to share more as the time comes for that. But what a day it's been. I mean, we've been here since around 10 o'clock and we've been fleshing out a lot of different problems, but it's been exciting. What'd you guys think about the, the last little session? Yeah, some thumbs. Um, fleshing out the logistics stuff is definitely the harder part. Um, I think that's usually what happens though, is like, you have a business idea. It sounds great, the high level stuff, but once you actually get down to logistics, something, that's when it's like, <laughs> oh, is this doable? Is this not? But yeah, I mean, I've hosted a lot of events before in my own space, bringing people into my small studio apartment. But obviously, there I control everything from the food and drink on hand to the temperature of the thermometer and so the thermostat. Uh, and so, thinking through how do you bring one of these events to a more public space has definitely been a challenge for us today. But I think we iterated on a few different ideas of doing restaurants we're meeting up at a bar or a coffee shop afterwards and we started hitting our stride so we have uh, about a month and a half to finalize the details and looking forward to getting a great event together for you all there we go uh, the financial projections might be the hardest part <laughs> what if these numbers just don't math numbers <laughs> we're just pulling out of the mass <laughs> These, these numbers have like very little meaning. We're just trying to see like whether or not ballpark, if this is like a feasible thing to do. Um, so are all of these are really far assumptions. 
Yeah, I think in Chicago we have enough of a network where we can get to like 200 users as it is, but I think in other cities that's where it gets tough. Yeah, any of those T2, T3 cities, the Charlottes, the Nashvilles. I don't know about Cincinnati. <laughs> yeah. Cincinnati could work. Oh, man. They have a really good bar scene, actually. Really? Yeah, they do. Had a fun, fun time there. San Antonio, yeah. <laughs> Texas. Texas. Anywhere with a, young, a big youth population where... I, I mean, I'd be curious what cities are super popular on Gen Z. Denver. Denver. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're just wrapping up on our almost eight hour session. A lot of work, new challenges, new problems, but wrapped up on those three goals. We have a service ready to go in market for the first time through beta testing. Talked a lot about business model, even though we just threw a bunch of numbers out of our ass. And then uh, third, we actually got some matching criteria done for some of our initial surveys. So. You gotta you gotta know what's uh, something dope that we uh, that you think was that we accomplished today. Um, really, just like that first experience, um, we actually booked the restaurants and stuff, and it just feels official now. Like we can start sending invites and and uh, getting people to sign up for this Arts View Pizza this first iteration. So that's exciting. What about you, Noah? Yeah, you know, we got the Stripe set up and we're trying to ultimately run this as a business. We hope it adds a lot of value to the world, but we are trying to do this as a business as well. So we'll see if people think what we're trying to offer is worth money or not. And I think that'll be where the rubber hits the road and really where we start getting some brutally honest feedback. Because uh, I'm sure not everyone will think it's worth that. Maybe some people will think it's worth more or less. And I think that's really where we can start figuring out uh, how we're going to build this business. Awesome. And if you want to follow for more, and if you're in Chicago, follow Third Space Social, number three on Instagram below. But uh, that's where we'll be announcing some, some more announcements. So excited for everyone here in Chicago to get the chance to, to be able to try something like this. So stay tuned. Awesome. Oh, what a freaking day. <laughs> big day, big day. Big day. Started at 10 a.m. and here we are now. At... Almost what? six. Almost six, but that was fun, well worth it. No, no, that's fun. That was fun. Uh, who knows? This thing just might implode. <laughs> <laughs> we're pivoting. We're pivoting already. <laughs> I looked we at sat through like work session. We're like, oh, that's not gonna work. Oh, that's not gonna work either. <laughs> we looked through the finances and we're like, what are we doing? <laughs> but it's all good, you know. Uh, it's cool. Yeah. That just means I have to build scalable ass software and uh, customer acquisition needs to be like zero dollars and uh, <laughs> operating costs zero dollars. So it'll just be a uh, uh, revenue straight to income, right? Dear, That's how it works, right? We're going to need to put in the work when it comes to content. Yeah, but uh, this is what it's actually like building a startup. A lot of questions, but this shit's been fun as hell so that far fun. that was fun so comment below what do you want to see from you know us capturing our startup journey or being a creator here in chicago yeah it should be fun you want to see the technical side go to add just be chung youtube go add just be chung <laughs> on youtube he's documenting the other side but hope you guys enjoyed this youtube video i'll catch you guys in the third installment and that'll be soon peace